Recording. Okay, hi there. Just a review of the Motor Marini Xgate first ride. I had it delivered last week. I uh, just got it insured, so just going to take it for its first spin. Um, I swapped the Motor Guzzi V85 TT for it with a little bit of cash. Uh, that bike had been a good bike, I'd owned it for a few years. Uh, but it was just a bit redundant in the fleet of bikes that I've run. Uh, and then I saw the Motor Marini I was coming out and I was just intrigued by it, I guess in the same way I was by the Guzzi when that first came out. Uh, it looked something a bit different. I like the styling of it, actually. I thought it looked uh, really fresh, uh, the Motor Marini. And uh, then the price, I think 7495, the UK price. Initially, it was going to be 6995, which would have been a, a real bargain. But it's coming at 7.5, I think. I, I, you lose track when you do a part X. You lose... You lose track of what something's worth and what you've got for your all bike. But yeah, I think 7,500. 7, it's a 650cc twin. Uh, the engine's built on license, whatever license means. I don't, I don't quite know if that's it's a copy or it's an exact uh, replica um, of the Kawasaki engine that's in the Versus. Uh, sort of that age-old Kawasaki 650 twin engine that's been around for years. So the notion is that you've got to, you're starting with a, a reliable engine and uh, a well-proven engine, and then they built a bike around that. Uh, there's a bit a lot of criticism, or the first thing that comes up from the spec sheet is is the weight of the bike, uh, and I think they claim something like 213 dry or or, or whatever, uh, which is a really meaningless figure because what does dry mean? Is that is that with uh, radiator fluid is that with oil you know it's, it's, it's a vague term I had this bike on the scales at home uh, when, it, when it first got delivered uh, and uh, with the empty with the fuel tank empty or with a few liters in uh, it weighed 222 kilos I've just put in 15 liters to fill it so to me that means an exact curb weight ie side of the road fully fueled uh, of 237 kilos which is a heavy it makes it a heavy bike um the guzzy with the center stand and the panier of frames and things was 262 uh i've had a v-strom on the scales and i think that was 235 a tiger 900 is 28228 two, 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 um oh thank you thank you so that makes the motor Marini x cape 650 heavier than a v-strom 1050 and uh, all that's heavier as a V-Strom 1050 uh, and a little bit heavier than a Target 900. Uh, I suppose in a way just because it's got a slightly smaller displacement than a, a V-Strom doesn't necessarily mean it's going to weigh less because it's still got wheels, suspension, chassis, brakes, plastics. Um, I think there's a lot of people get caught up with the weight, certainly on the spec sheet weight, uh, and they judge a bike accordingly. Uh, personally, I think it's how a bike feels rather than necessarily what it weighs on the spec sheet that matters. Uh, I mean, the Himalaya is a good case in point. 209 kilos on my scales, wet, uh, which is uh, very heavy for uh, that size of bike. But, it, you know, when you ride it on trails, it doesn't feel uh, that heavy. This Xscape does feel heavy, uh, heavier than a CB500X, um, on par with the Tiger 900, etc., to move around. So uh, it, it's not like it, it weighs a lot, but it hides it well. It does feel like a, a 235 kilo bike to, to move around. And you're either comfortable with that or you're not. Uh, was it Colin Chapman who said you could, uh, uh, what is it, power, price, weight, pick pick two, because you can't have all three. And I think the Marini's gone for, um, I've got that completely wrong over there. But anyway, it's, I guess at seven and a half thousand pound, you know, <laughs> It's, it's probably not going to be engineered to be light. It's engineered to be st strong and robust and cheap to build. And that possibly equates to a slightly heavier uh, curb weight. It has got tubeless rims. It has got tire pressure sensors. It has got a rear rack. So it has got a few uh, little bits on it. First impressions as I'm just bobbling along. Well, first impression is quite a firm suspension. Uh, the Marzocchi forks. I'm not sure if it's a Mar Marzocchi. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, you right. Cheers. Nearly got her. Uh, so Marzocchi front uh, forks. We've got Brembo brakes. They feel pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, they pre work pretty well. Uh, we've got Pirelli tyres. Uh, and for anybody who's not aware, uh, 
uh, motor really is Chinese owned so I guess this is a Chitalian bike uh, owned manufactured in China and designed engineered in Italy it's a recipe that's not oddly worked very well in the case of Pinelli with the TRK 502 and I guess we've got the 802 coming as well which I guess is going to be another good bike from them CF Moto who share the engine with this x -Cape. That's what they're also uh, doing, seeming to be doing well and getting positive reviews. So uh, I think there's now pedigree in this uh, sort of Chinese-European uh, relationship that manufacturers are striking up. So let's hope for the best with the motor breedy, I guess is what I'm saying. Where it's obviously going to fall down against the competition is dealerships, pedigree, uh, perception of quality, that sort of thing, which, which they've all got to, they've got to win people over. I think Benelli's done a good job. They've had a good range of dealers selling the product. And I'm on the owner's form of the TRK502. And I've got to be honest, there's not any faults, consistent faults, that come to light. It seems a very reliable bike, that. So, again, let's hope for the same with this uh, Motor Marini. Six-speed box, uh, 60 brake horsepower. Yeah. It's a, pretty, it's a bit of a bread and butter 650 machine, to be honest. People are going to say, why not buy a Tenere 700? I guess they're a couple of grand more. Uh, but then you say, what else would you buy? What what else is out there? Because, you know, this is essentially a Versus 650 with a 19-inch front wheel, if, we, if we're saying it's the same engine. So why aren't Kawasaki offering a Versus 650 with a 19-inch front wheel? A more adventurised bike is kind of what we've been asking for. You know... Uh, the, man, the Japanese manufacturers are, le are leaving these gaping holes in uh, the market. And I guess the Chinese are just going, oh, well, we'll fill that. And this is essentially what Kawasaki should have been building. But they're not building it. Neither is Suzuki. I know we've got the V-Strom 650 XT, which I guess is probably a similar comparison to this. But they could have done some DRs or uh, Yamaha could have done an MT uh, Tenere 300. Um, who else we got? We've got uh, Honda. I mean, where's the Trans out? We've got the CB500X, but it's a big gap from that to the to the Africa Twin. Yes, we're told a, a mid-size Africa Twin is coming, but when? Uh, you know, how long do we have to wait for the Japanese to actually build bikes. To me, the Japanese have become very, or may always have been, very complacent and kind of lazy or at least um, reserved in, in their product development and their urgency. Uh, and that's just leaving this big gaping hole for, for the Chinese in connection with European brands. So that's why I went for the, the Motor Moody, because it intrigues me. Because is it any good? You know, I honestly don't know if it's going to be any good or not. It might be an absolute turd. It might break down. It might be not nice to ride. People might not like it. You know, it might fall to pieces. Who knows? But sometimes, I think you've just got to take gambles in life, or else everyone's going to be riding around on uh, V-Strom 650 XTs. We can't really have that. Uh, so I'm going to try it on this lane. Now, let's not pretend this is an off-road bike. It's not an off-road bike. It's not going to be a hard trail, hard enduro type technical British trail bike kind of thing. It's not that. It's a Savannah bike. Let's call them Savannah bikes where you've got a good open piece like this, uh, which I guess in a way an FJ, FJR 1300 could go up there. But what you want is a bike that does it with a bit of confidence, sure-footedness. Uh, and you could do it in theory all day long as you cross Morocco or... Well, I have a bit uh, Himalayas or South America, something like that. I think when we as Brits judge an off-road bike, we're judging it as a trail bike. Uh, and these bigger bikes over 200 kilos are never going to be trail bikes. Never in a million years. You can ride them on trails and sometimes you can get great success. But it's not what they were designed for. Got a nice TFT screen. I'll just show you that actually. Turn it on. I mean, there's a lot of weight here. There's a lot of mass there when you think about it. Motor Marini screen comes on. Switch gears, pretty good actually. Feels pretty solid, stable. Uh, we've got rev counter. We've got rider mode. There is an off-road mode, but I believe that simply changes the graphic on the screen rather than uh, doing anything uh, to the traction control or ABS. So I believe that this is not... Uh, you can't turn traction control off on this, which is a big shame, obviously, because that's what we want to do. Because um, traction control off-road is a real hamper as soon as it starts to climb. Equally, ABS on the front can be horrendous uh, on loose stuff when you're trying to get a bit of brake in there. 
For some reason, this is still in kilometres an hour. I think that's a bit of bad PDI there to deliver a bike in kilometres an hour, but it is what it is. There's no instruction book with the bike, which is, again, something they need to improve on because I don't know. I don't have the foggiest idea how to change this to, uh, to kilometres, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to take it for a spin. All right, this is a well-known trail to me. First thing I noticed earlier, it's got a good standing position. Nice wide bars. Pegs are sit, sit high. I think there's a good commanding um, view of the trail. So I've got these sort of semi-off-road tyres on it. I've got good throttle response. That's always important. I can get to the gear lever pretty easy. I can get my boot under that. That feels nice. Power delivery is progressive. There's no snatchiness in the throttle. Okay, dealt with those dips quite well. We're getting a bit of a speed on here. 57, 60 kilometers an hour, a bit of squirt. And I tell you what, that feel, whoop, a bit of scuttle there, a bit of head shake. That's just showing its limitation. 64 kilometers an hour, 40 miles an hour or so. Yeah, 80 kilometers an hour up here, 50 mile an hour, it's a bit over the TRF uh, advised limit, but she feels good, she feels planted. As I say, what's good about it, it's got a nice good commanding riding position, which is the first battle I find with the, the bike you want to take off road. Can you stand comfortably? Yes. Okay, game on really. Just wearing that front end, giving it a shake earlier, I don't want to overwhelm it. Um, Actually, ride quality is pretty good though. It's doing a great job of absorbing these undulations, ruts, rivets, divots. Having a good speed, 74k. Bit of a squirt. Still running her in, obviously, so not too ham-fisted. Fifth gear, pulling really nicely. It feels a little bit low geared, if anything. Okay, I'm just going to pull over. I can't tell you. Uh, the full truth in a two minute test ride on our off road section, but I brought a few bikes down there. Pretty much every bike I've ever tested, I brought down that lane. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good lane to get a quick assessment of a bike uh, because it's got to deal with lots of little chop uh, and you're carrying a bit more speed. And you want to something, as I say, you want to feel stable on it and you want to feel uh, that you're comfortable on the pegs. And I guess that delivered nice throttle input, felt balanced. Suspension dealt well with it. What it's going to like on anything a bit slower and steeper. Pass, I can't really tell you that. But the standing position is good. That is the first thing. The sitting position, when you're seated, there's quite a big sculpt to that seat, which puts you in a position that might be suited to you. It might not be. Um, some people like a bench seat. This is not a bench seat. Just let me see what... Have we got traction control? I'm assuming we have. Well, I don't know. She got a little bit outwards then. I mean, it has got traction control, but that, that, that gave me a bit of slip then. It's a brand new bike, so forgive me for being a little bit wary about drifting the back end there. Um, let me just try back. Yeah, we've got ABS on the rear. Yeah, ABS on the front works well, actually. That's pretty good. I'm going to go around the puddles. I can't bear to get it dirty. It's a handsome bike, I think, this. I think it's going to get some interest, uh, certainly from a visual perspective. I think the issue for Moto Marini is going to be able, is going to be getting people to try one because A, there's a limited amount of dealerships, and B, people are risk adverse when they buy, when they go to buy, uh, buy bikes. They don't, they don't want to, they don't necessarily want something different. They want something they know they're going to get a good resale value for. Um, you know, they want something that they can get, they know they can get parts for. And the manufacturer's not going to discontinue it within a year. Things like that. On the road, the bike feels good. It's, it feels very stable. It feels like it's got a bit of verve, a bit of character to it. Obviously, I'm running it in, so... What's that? Three and a half thousand miles. I don't. I haven't got a book, so I can't refer to the handbook. But I'm not labouring it. I'm not over revving it. Red line looks to be at nine thousand. 
uh, got a gear indicator, fuel indicator, trip computer. I should have um, tire pressure sensor somewhere. I'll figure that menu out. And then I can also connect to music, so I guess to my phone uh, through my headset. Um, so yeah, the tech is there. I think the tech is there. Adjustable screen, although it doesn't seem to be adjustable on the fly, can't quite figure it out. It'd be nice if it was. Wing mirrors are quite a cheap um, item, so they're not very easy to adjust on the move. <coughs> Doing some corners, couldn't we? But it's, it's how a bike handles on this sort of back road riding that, that um, is a big test for me. How it rides on fast flowing A roads is one thing, but how it deals with the chop and the turn and the twist and the camber changes um, and the imperfections of a back road is, is important because that's where I do most of my riding. I've got a feeling that the engine's going to feel strong once it's running. It's got some initial pull on the throttle. It feels torquey. Peak power's a bit less than the Kawasaki version of the engine. Um, whether that will rob it of ultimate, you know, top end surge. Um, but if it if it pulls better through the low to mid range or pulls as well, then I guess that's a, that's a challenge. I'm probably going to turn off now. Um, just thing, one slight negative I've got, um, but it's not a big one. The gear lever has got a long lot of throw to it, a lot of movements to, to get it to change gear, and there's a little bit of a like um, a ledge in it, a step in it. Uh, that doesn't feel quite as strong and positive as maybe it could do. I, I don't think it's a, I'm not saying it's a, a big issue, but it's just as I'm changing gears, I think, oh, there's a long throw in that gear lever. Just go there, I'm trying to think. Where's some corners? Corners this way, corners to the right. Yeah, I mean, even just around that roundabout, you, you get a feel for the sure-footedness of a bike. It all feels good. It feels like a motorbike. Uh, I, that, I mean, that's an odd thing to say, it feels like a motorbike, but... Um, when I first rode a Chinese bike, uh, uh, it was the Honley Venturer back in 2004, 14, 2014, so eight years ago. And uh, that was uh, basically a CSC... Uh, 300, but it was, a, it was a 250, it was a 250 single. Uh, Honley, uh, Huddersfield dealer, Kawasaki dealer was bringing them in and, and badging them as Honleys. But it was it was essentially the CSC 250. And that bike was an absolute tripe, it really was a poor bike. The fueling was poor, the suspension was poor. There wasn't a good element to that bike apart from the price maybe, but that, that wasn't enough to sell it. And that was a Chinese bike, and, and you, you think, well, that's clearly where the ridicule uh, has come from. Uh, but eight years is, things have changed a lot, really, because, as I say, this feels, and it's touching its feel, its tactile nature of, of what is a motorcycle, i.e. hands-on experience. It feels pretty good, everything moves well, touches well, clicks into place well. So the perception of quality is certainly there. Uh, Long-term quality, who knows? Um, but I think as well as giving the Chinese the technology, which is what the Japanese and the European brands have done, I think they've probably also given them the quality control. Yeah, KTM get their engines for the 890 built in China, BMW get their 850 GS engines built in China. So I think as well as the technology that's been blessed to the Chinese, so too as a, the ability to make a, a reliable quality product. But again, we'll see. Uh, I think one of the biggest issues that the Chinese bikes have, or any bike connected to China, China or Chinese um, origins, is just um, the ethics of China. And, uh, you know, judging a bike as I am now, you've got to try and, well, I am trying to separate, separate out the product versus the nation's politics and, and ways of life. Uh, I've been through Western China, I've seen what's happening to the Uyghurs. It's not very pretty. It's not a regime I would support. Or... But everybody's building bikes in China. And, and it's, you know, uh, I don't know, or getting parts built in China. 
So it's, a, it's a little bit difficult to be pious when the options, alternatives are few. So we've got Sweet Adlin. This is a, a flowing A road. I've got good brakes, I've got good feel on the brakes, I've got good rolling. You know, I feel I've got some traction. I've got good clean pickup, the fueling's good on it. I think the, mar the engine could do with some more miles, there's a bit of gruffness just as it gets to four, but that's it's a brand new bike with a few miles on it. But the pace is good, the handling is sure footed, the suspension feels good actually. You know, there, into that left hander, I feel like I've got a very, I can keep a very tight line. Or a controlled line, let's say. I was always indifferent to the Guzzi, I, I never, on this kind of road, I always felt, found it a little bit feel of uh, lacking in feel uh, and connectivity to the road, and I, I, I never felt maybe as connected as I could have done or, or should have been able to. Even on the Himalayan, the, you know, a bike that some people ridicule, but on the road, that thing stuck like glue in a corner and it always gave you great confidence that it was going to hold a line. The Guzzi, I'd never got that sense of connectivity with. Uh, this is a risk of. Um, Ridicule, I, I think this seems to handle for me a little bit crisper, sharper than the Guzzi, uh, which is no bad thing. Okay, okay, I'm going to be naughty. Uh, you want, do you want me to see, do you want me to take it on a t t tough lane, don't you? I know where there's a tough lane there, yeah. But uh, I feel like I am the guinea pig for the motor breed brand, but this is a terrible idea to even think about taking it where I think I'm going to take it. Let me have a quick talk to myself and see if it's a good idea and if, let's see what happens. Let's see where I am when I press record next. All right, catch you in a minute. Recording. Okay, this is the most uh, stupid idea I've ever had. Um, brand new motorcycle, seven and a half thousand pairs. Um, no proven off-road credentials or ability. I guess both me and the boy. Uh, it's going to do this green layer, which I know is quite a tricky one, actually. Uh, it has been graded in the last year by the farmer. It's made it a bit more manageable, but it's a, it's a sloppy uh, lane, rutted, or can be rutted, um, with a bit of a climb at the end. So we'll see how we get on, really. You know, with all, always when you're going off-road and you're a bit nervous, just ride within your limit. I mean, it's quite dry, actually. It looks quite manageable. Right within your limit, know when to stop, know when to bail out. Oh Jesus, oh they are stony as buggery, a bit more power. Yeah, it's a bit choppier that, it's not really built for that sort of terrain. Suspension copes, but it's, uh, yeah. I think it, it just, on that sort of stuff, it shows its road credential suspension. Um, people, somebody pointed out on the, on the, Facebook page I did that it's only got 135 mil of travel at the rear, which isn't a lot. A Tenere 700 has got 200. So, so it's clear actually from the spec sheet that you know Motor Marina didn't set out to build a uh, an off-road bike to rival uh, the the Tenere. They clearly didn't. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Just watching for ridges, camber changes here. I feel like I've got a bit of grip with these Pirellis. Uh, they have got a, a constant band across the, the rear though, so they're not going to get a lot of purchase in muddy terrain. They're more of a, sh a show tyre for the off-road rather than a real off-road tyre. Okay, the bike's firm over this rough stuff. Uh, I mean, if it stayed like this, I'd be happy, but I know at the end there's a bit of a challenging climb, which I'm not sure I'm going to do, to be honest. But yeah, if you're thinking about getting something like this, or a V-Strom, or yeah, any of these 200 kilo plus bikes do this kind of riding, you're buying the wrong bike. You know, the fear now, crashing this, A, costly, B, um, the weight of it, um, and it's, it's not a relax, it doesn't make for a relaxing ride. So if you want to do this type of trail, just get a trail bike. Get something less than 200. It's definitely the bike to have. Okay. Just going to walk this lane, actually. Which I know seems a bit of a cop-out, but... 
to be honest, I don't really want to take this bike back in pieces. It's too pretty. I don't know why I'm walking it, because I know even if it looks disastrous, I'll still have a go. We'll give it a go. Let's have a look at this motor in. It's a handsome bike though, isn't it? <laughs> That's, there's going to be a lot of plastic on the trail if that gets dropped. So it's been graded a little bit. But what it is, is the ridge running to the left of this track. You know, I've took people up here on Tenere 700s and they've really struggled and have had to bail them out. Yeah, as you can see there. Okay. And you've got to get a clean line. If you get the wrong line, that's it. A problem is, a 200 of, you know, you can say weight's not important and it's not really on the road. I, I don't think it is a big deal. Um, but here... The camera's not going to pick this up. now. I'm going to turn back. Really sorry to disappoint you. But I'm not going to wreck a good bike to prove what I already know, which is a technical trail like that. I don't know if you can see it very well. With roots and things. It's not built for a bike like this. Or a bike like this is not built for a trail like that. You'd bob up here on your Himalayan, your CRF, CT125. You know. Uh, and if you've got a bit more confidence with the bike that you just bought, You'd probably have a whip up, up here as well, but uh, nah, too much plastic there. Sorry to disappoint there. I know, I bet you're thinking, what a cop out, what a loser, but it's not your seven and a half grand, is it? So, I'm going to spin it around. I think it shows, though, you, you know, this kind of lighter trail, like this section here, bike's fine for. I still want to give it a go, though. Oh, hate turning around hate turning around problem is you've got to be really committed on that section if you start half arsing it things go badly wrong i know what you're saying i know what you say i know what you're screaming at me now so just fucking try it right you're gonna chip in for a new fairing yeah you're gonna put in crowd surfing okay yeah, come on, come on. Let's just spin on that rock. I've got a bit of head shake there. Okay, that was. Uh... <laughs> oh dear. Oh. You ever feel like you're your own worst enemy at times? Um, okay, so the bike went up that, went up that all right. Um, the, the, you felt you could feel with with really longer travel suspension and things, it'd be easier. Uh, but that that coped, that did it head up, and it, got, it sort of gained good traction, and, and again, it's got good balance. I didn't feel like it was going to stall on me. It feels like it's got a good, strong chug. Um, you know, I wasn't really slipping the clutch. I got it, the clutch covered, but I wasn't working. I wasn't pumping the clutch then. So it will do that. Again, you know, buy one of these, do that sort of trail. No. It is a bad idea. But... The Motor Breedy is all right. It is all right. As a trail bike or as a Savannah bike, as we've said, it's all right. Mainly because it's got this, which is a lovely, good, comfortable standing position. I've got my arms flared up. It's got a, it's got a kind of an enduro uh, stance. Feels very natural for me, at least. I'm five foot ten, and the bike feels balanced. When I'm sat down. It feels like the bars are forward. It feels like the bars are almost rolled forward. When you get a GS 1200, 1250 brand new, it feels like the bars are here. So that's the natural uh, position that they've got in mind for them. On this, they clearly have positioned things to be comfortable stood up. Um, which is a good thing, I guess, in this case. But if, if you wanted a more relaxed riding position, you maybe want to, you could roll the bars back a bit towards you. Because I feel a touch, like a little bit outstretched like that. Not a lot, but just a, a little bit. I've got adjustable suspension. I'm not entirely sure what adjustment I've got or what for. I'm assuming a bit of preload and, and, and rebound damping. 
again there's no manual with it so I could do with having a quick look maybe we can soften it up a bit um, make it a little bit more forgiving but all in all from this quick little first ride uh, I mean I can't open the taps I can't tell you what it's like on a motorway etc what I could say actually the wind buffeting is pretty uh, it's, it, it, well, let's open it up down here let's see what we'll okay so I've got I've got minimal wind buffet in there that's 100 miles an hour that I mean that screen is much better than the guzzy because uh, at 60 miles an hour the sorry 60 miles an hour not 100 at 60 miles an hour the guzzy was blowing my ears off that at 100 is is good I've got earplugs in but that screen feels effective on another practical note, I've just had a pillion on before this, I had to take a chap to the petrol station, David, and um, it carried a pillion fire, as you would expect with a heavy 650 twin, it, it, it was fine. Uh, service intervals on it are, first service is 600 miles, um, I don't have a book, so I don't know the exact um, change, of, change of oil for the first service. I've heard different things from 6,000 to 8,000. Um, I would say 6,000 is what it's most likely to be. It is a lot, I tell you what, it's, it's a lovely riding bike. Like the, the, this, you know, tipping into a roundabout, does it feel stable? Does it feel adjustable? Yes. Is the fueling good? Yes. Is the throttle response smooth and crisp? Yes. Are the brakes uh, feel some? Um, do they bite well? Do they give good progressive braking? Yes. Do the controls, does that indicator feel positive? Yes. Um, so, you know, if you were to form any judgment from this quick review is, it, it rides well. It's a, it's a nice riding bike. The suspension feels like it's been set up well for road riding. There's a bit of suppleness there over these, uh, over the um, joining strips and the undulations, but it, it gives good control. So they've 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 sort of staggered a good line uh, between control and comfort. So, if anybody's thinking about buying one, I mean the only way you're going to know if it is for you or not is by riding one. There's no way. Oops, a bit tight. There's no way you could read a review or watch a review and say, well, that guy likes it, therefore I'm going to buy one. I mean, that's just ridiculous. The best thing is say, uh, yep, yeah, I'm interested, and I would say it's, it feels like it's worth a test drive. Pickup's good there, balance is good. It's just got good, every, everything you touch and pull and feel, feels good, it feels nicely balanced. Uh, so I'd say it's definitely uh, worth road testing and then it's up to you you know only you can decide I see people anguishing over what bikes to buy but you know um, first and foremost you've got to narrow down what what you want to do with your bike I saw somebody the other day wondering whether you should get a 310 GS or a Royal Enfield Meteor I mean you could get two different bikes so you say what does that bike want to, what does the guy want to do with it well, once you decide what you want to do with it or what you need it for then the decision gets it bit easier but you've got to have a criteria to begin with um, and so if your criteria for a bike is a 650 twin mid-sized bike yes it would be better if it was a bit lighter I don't think you could deny that um, would that lightness cost more money I don't know that's only something the engineers can can answer um, how else could it be improved <laughs> that's it really that little bit of weight but you know as I say when people quote weight I'm not it's not like I'm bench pressing the bike or intend to so like now riding and putting my foot down moving it around it's it's a motorbike it's it's a heavy thing it's you know it's not built from air it's got material in it and uh, the, the seat height on this uh, I'm talking too much now I realize but the seat height of this of 835 and adjustable means that I can get my feet down and I can move the bike the weight is not an issue um, so there we go, Motor Marini Xcape 650. A very exciting road now through Barnstable. I hope you're enjoying this uh, this uh, urban uh, experience. And if you want to come down and actually, I should plug my own business here. If you want to come down and ride the Motor Marini Xcape back to back with a Himalayan, a 390 KTM Adventure, and a um, Himalayan, a CRF 300, a CB500X with a Rally Raid kit. 
then they come and give us a shout. I've got this on fleet for other people to ride, to road test. If you just want to come and test ride this, it will cost you, but it might save you money buying the wrong bike. Um, down in North Devon, dorothyspeedshop.com. Give us a look up. Uh, I can, as you can guess, I could probably talk motorbikes all day long and all through the night. So if you want to come and try some bikes, ride some bikes, part of a group or one-on-ones, just give me a shout and we'll talk shite about motorbikes until you're blue in the face. Just going to drop into Ireland. This is my local bike shop. Please support them because they're good guys and they look after me. Um, Ireland's just over on here on the right. I'm just going to drop in there to show off me motor marini. And it'll probably say, it's, yeah, but it's Chinese, isn't it? <laughs> I'll say, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, jeez, I'm not going to... Should, should have got an Italian, really, shouldn't I? Never mind. All right. Cheers, guys.